Hey, this is Dave Pryor for Leading Agile Sound Notes. We are at Agile 2017 all week doing videos with thought leaders and speakers and people running the events who are here just in case you can't make it so you get a sense of what's going on. Um, so these are going to be live all week, so thanks for watching. And Trisha Broderick's here. Thanks for coming by. I know Thank you're you. super busy. That's okay. You got Always a little, make time. few things going on this week. <laughs> Always make time. Conference chair. Yes. So, 2017. Can you, you spent a lot of time this morning, there's a welcome session in the morning for the yes. folks who come, and you talked about a lot of stuff that I think people don't always know about. They come to this, they know that there's a bunch of sessions, which there are over 270. Over two, yeah. Which is a lot and in four days. Four and, four and, and a half, half days. yeah. yeah. Um, what about some of the other stuff that's happening here? Like, what are the, the bright spots that people might not know about? Um, well, and I think some of that ties to a lot of the experiments that we try each year. Okay. Um, so we added a couple, uh, we added a new track this year okay. called Agile Companies, and it's a way of really talking about how sessions specifically targeted at talking about how can the rest of the organization support and become agile as well, along with software development or IT specifically. So like HR, HR, finance. marketing, okay. sales, Great. whatever. Um, and so I'm really excited with the submissions that came in for that and the program that was put together for that. So I think we're going to start seeing a larger audience right. uh, uh, of how we all work together to deliver okay. quality software. Um, and that was an experiment for this year okay. so far. Really happy, so we'll see how the sessions go uh, <laughs> with with the actual delivery and yeah. and and. But right now, we're really positive about okay. the interest. Cool. Uh, the other ones uh, are tied to kind of some different things. Um, one of my baby experiments that uh, this is the second year of doing it is Audacious Lawn. Okay. And Audacious Lawn was really a place where I've been coming to this conference for ten years, uh, and. There's always things to be learning, but sometimes it gets a little hard to go in a session and want to respect the speaker right. of what they're delivering and what they're sharing, but also wanting to contribute, right? It's like, oh, yeah. let's, let's have this conversation. Let's dig in this. And a lot of times we have those in the evenings the as we're yeah. chatting in the hall, and I, I really wanted to somewhat level the playing field, I guess, for, for in some regards to okay. how do we help show other people that dynamic that we're getting in those hallways or in those evenings at dinner and stuff. And so we created a track specifically targeted for the speakers or facilitators. They're not actually delivering anything. And okay. you're curating. So like workshops? Yeah. Well, they're workshops, but they're workshops of... Um, let's talk about this topic and see if we can come up with new ideas or areas. So they're actually curating the material while they're in there. Oh, wow. And having the same kind of debate. Like a test kitchen kind of. Yeah. That's and very cool. It's limited because we need everybody participating, but it's really for experienced agilists of a place to go, I want to dive into this and yeah. I want to dig into this, not just be talked at or go through exercises in the class. And... Um, and yeah. you're not announcing who's who's doing stuff. No, right? I was looking so, at my watch because I know someone who's doing one. Yeah, right now. We weren't allowed to talk <laughs> about it, but there's well, things Well, and that was part there. of it was was we don't want it to be about the facilitator. It's actually attendees right. and what they're curating. So yeah, the facilitators are not announced as to who's doing that. That's just something they want to do to give back to the community. Do you do you find? I mean, I know there's tons of submissions, but yes. like you just mentioned, people will go for the, the speakers. So like I always tell everyone, what doesn't matter what Ron and Chad are doing, you have to go <laughs> see that because it's just amazing. It's, yeah. um, do you find that there is kind of a lot of that, a lot of this person's a rock star, just go see and whatever they're talking about, or is it kind of a very even mix of newcomers speaking for the first time? Uh, um, oh, so as speakers, yeah. there's definitely a mix. Okay. Um, we do not select based on speak solely based on speaking history by any means. So there's okay. tons of first time speakers here as well. Um, we try and go out of our way to help in any way that we can. It, it can be a little intimidating. This is a big yeah. conference to 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 really be putting it out there. Uh, but we but we do know that there are attendees that are looking for their author of the book that they yeah. just read and that they want to go and check it out. They want to see you know, Alistair Coburn to understand, you know, maybe more of the history of when it started. Mm -hmm. or, and, and so we're aware of that and we're, uh, but it's not a dry, it's not an automatic. But there's okay. no like, don't you know who I am? Like that. Well, no, that, I was that's... just thinking like if it's, if it's all sessions where you're just going because it's these people. I mean, it, to me, it seems like there's a fair mix of 
new blood. And that's when, like, I know lots of people who, like, submit and then don't get anything accepted. And like, wow, yes. well, so what if you've been in three years? They shouldn't have you back. They should get somebody new. And we don't really, there isn't conversations that happen that are along those lines. We truly have an amazing track chairs that do, that work with all these reviewers and they look at the submissions, they look at, you know, speaker history or where they've spoken, but they also look at the topic yeah, and what are they trying to accomplish and what are the learning objectives and, and in some cases it's what are they trying to achieve with the program and then, and then the program team gets all these recommendations from, for, right. you know, from the various track chairs and then we put it together looking for what are the holes that, as a complete program. So it's, it's, it's a process, but it's one that really has a lot of checks and balances to make sure that there isn't anybody just sitting in the garden. Ah, that, that day, guy. Breyer. Yeah, they don't. Not again. He's out. But so I, I think that's it's cool because I, you've got this wide range of sessions, and I, I always feel like there is something for every in at like, whatever. It's almost you overwhelming. Want, it's here. Yeah, it is yeah. overwhelming. And, and even the stuff that's not in the sessions, you got the open jam, the the clinic. Yeah. Uh, yes. Which which. Paul and Chris are going to come talk about that later today. Okay, but, agile therapy. Yep. Yeah. Um, there, it seems like there's new stuff every year. You guys well, are and we this. realize this is a long time, and, and I'm not, uh, one of the things that we advertise and, and we recommend is people self care. And, yeah. and if you, you know, you've been in session after session take and it's not, <laughs> take a nap, it's, o it's okay, or it's like I need something different. And that's why we try and have variations yeah. so that people who are like, I can't sit in another session right now. But they don't want to feel they feel bad leaving the conference. We want to provide those other options, whether it's a lounge or open jam, agile therapy, it's the bookstore, just different things for people to be able to continue to engage yeah. if they want, in their own way. but in their own way. Yeah. Do you think this is not a question that we talked about, but I'm going to ask it anyway? Oh, see, he's but it's an easy one. <laughs> um, do you feel like I mean you've been coming to this for a long time, and yes. you go to other conferences too? Yes. For the folks that are coming to something like this for the first time, do you, was there like a learning curve for you? Did it take a couple years for you to get your feet with this and realize this is how I survive the week and get value out of it? So, so specific to this conference, I think I, that's a difficult question for me to ask, be, answer in okay. the sense that this is my 10th year. Right. When I started coming, it was much smaller. Okay. Um, you know, the sessions were usually about 30 people in a room. Now okay. they're usually 150, 180 yeah. kind of room sizes. Uh, so, and I, but well, what is the same? And I, I truly believe this, and I, I mentioned this in the welcome this morning, is the people. And yeah. so um, I mentioned this when I was talking, I, I, my very first conference, I walked out of, Lisa Atkins gave a session. And she said, and I, I still, 10 years, and I still remember this. She, she held up a blank piece of paper, and she said, if you become an Agile leader, this is what your resume will look like. And I just, like, had this, like, falling out of my chair <laughs> reaction, right? Like, of just... Because that never happens in a Lisa session to anyone. Well, ever. yeah, but I, it was this, like, realization that I knew she was right, yeah. But terrifying yeah. because I had spent so much time building, building up all the cred, the cred, yeah. right? Building this resume, building the skill sets, yeah. getting results. And I walked out of that session and I was just overwhelmed and I, panic stricken, honestly. Right. And I had attended Dave Hussman's session earlier in the day and he actually saw me and we met, like, talked for like five minutes. Like, that's it, earlier in the day. Yeah. Saw me and said, Let's sit down. Looks like you could use someone <laughs> to talk to. Yeah. And talked me off the ledge That's in great. a lot of ways. And I, um, it's actually kind of the inspiration for my blog where I wrote, you know, lead to the, you know, leading to the edge is because, lead to the edge is because he talked me off the ledge. And, yeah. and then, but at the end of the conversation, he looked at me and he's like, so you coming back next year and are you can and how, what are you speaking <laughs> and and it was just this invite invitation of yeah. what can you contribute back you know what can you share your knowledge and your growth as you're learning and i think that that's the thing that i would say to anybody whether it was 10 years ago or today is don't be afraid to engage with people because yeah. We're all, many of us are here to pay it forward many of us are here to continue to learn and to grow and to challenge ourselves and we want to be supportive. Yeah. Well, we, and I, I, there's another thing too. I think um, you come to an event like this; it's valuable. You participate in helping to build the show in some aspect. It's a totally different thing, yeah. and you get 
like that level of engagement and connections that are more valuable than anything. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a it is a way of feeling like you're making a difference. Yeah. Cool. All right. So. Okay. Switching topics. Okay. Now we're going to talk about work. So. Yeah. Um, you work for Agile for All. I do. Principal. Yeah. So you coach and you teach. Mm hmm and you got some events coming up, which are part of a new initiative out of the Scrum Alliance. Uh, yes. And, and some other and before, stuff, too. And before, yes, as well. So can you talk a little bit about those classes? So I used to be um, director of development for TechSmith. And during the time where I really was growing and learning and, and able to create some really amazing teams and amazing people and, and watching what they can do now. And, and in fact, that was kind of like, I'm a fangirl of Dave Marquette. Like I was just like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I kind of felt like when he mentioned in the keynote, it was like, I had no idea what I was doing. When yeah. I was like, and when COVID told me, I was like, whoa, yeah, that's, that's how really I feel really often. Really and so I, I joke because so many people for so long, well, I started, when I started coaching and training and speaking, how did you do it? What did you do? And, and it wasn't a quick answer, right? So I fell all over myself in front like, of everyone in public. But it wasn't a quick answer. Yeah. And, and uh, Jake Calabrese and I from Agile for All uh, decided that we wanted to create a course. We wanted to do something where we wanted to focus on leaders. I, okay. I hate Dilbert cartoons. I, I really, really do. I do. I think that we do a disservice to a lot of managers and leaders with this like flippant. Everybody's learning, but you should already know. And I'm now judging you for not doing a good job. And and um, so I wanted to create a course where it was really like, how do you lead? Like, what yeah. does that mean? And and I love David Marquez. The whole like thing the, like a language. The language, the yeah. clarity, but also the competence, and that it's not just a free for all. And and building that two way trust. And what does that mean? And how do you go about doing that? So we created a three day course, and it is an intense course of deep going in as as a leader. How am I coaching? How am I facilitating? Okay. How am I training? How am I mentoring? Not just. How am I delegating? Yeah. How am I time management? How am I negotiating? Am I loud enough and imposing enough Correct. physically? Correct. And, yeah. and um, <laughs> in some ways, I, I get the irony that I'm an agile coach, but in some ways, I think agile coaches have done a disservice to leaders because it's like, no, coaching, that's for the leader. Like, that's for agile coaches. No, if you're a leader, yeah. these are some skills you need to have yeah. is how to coach and how to help people reach new levels. and and feel that safety, but also feel the inspiration okay. to achieve those. So we're doing that. I'm super happy um, with, uh, we do that for a number of different clients, but so also you're publicly. Talking like at like exec, like what's the? So we've, it's a range. Um, okay. We made it for teams. So it, okay. it varied um, if, you're, if you're a leader of teams, like a scrum team sure. or a, a leadership team. Okay. Uh, which because is actually what my experience, my last experience was a leadership team, but we okay. incorporated a lot of scrum team level as well. Okay. Uh, but honestly, we had a, we intended it for people that's had leaders, but we've had a lot of feedback from people like I'm actually thinking about going in leadership. I'm not. I don't have a team right now, and okay. they've like they're like I may not be ready yet. I gotta go take this. You know. Yeah. <laughs> And so it's um, so we're targeted at leaders, okay. um, people who want to go to the next level, being able to truly not just use words like self-organizing team or empowerment, but actually achieve it. Okay, cool. So it's three days. It's three days. It's, it's uh, intense. So uh, it's certified Scrum Alliance. It's a leadership class. It is a ICI certified Agile. Agile leadership, so a CAL okay. from Scrum Alliance, as well as an IC Agile coaching certification. Okay. Wow, that's great. Yeah, so you two two certs for one. All right, there you go. And uh, they can go to Agile for All to find can, us. Yep, agileforall.com. Okay. okay, and you've got Denver in August. Yes, although and that one's almost full. I think there's only like a, one or two spots left. Okay. And is that near where you moved? Is that? It is. So you can commute to work. I can. So I do. A, a I do. I don't do many public coach. classes. Um, we do a lot more private classes, but um, I do try and keep a couple in Denver. So it's where. Right. So I get to stay home. And then San Francisco in September. In September. Yep. Okay. I, one one last question. Okay. Um, you just moved. I did. And I want to know if you used any agile practices, in. And <laughs> there's no live, wrong right? answer. Yeah, this is live. Live. Um, that's, why I, that's why I didn't say. So did you use any of that stuff when you were planning or when you were moving or, or anything like that? So we do. Okay. Um, actually, we've been doing something for a long time. I use this actually in my class, which 
now my husband can actually see it because now it's live. <laughs> um, but the honey to-do list yeah. has become actually... Otherwise known as the product backlog. It's become the product <laughs> backlog. Um, so we have Trello on our yeah. phone. Um, and and we assign ourselves and we get stuff done, but our entire move ever, all the tasks that Everything need to be done it. was on there. Um, my husband rightfully so believes that I overdo it a little bit with this. Uh, so occasionally I'll get a task assigned to me that says, tell your husband how wonderful he is. And you know, if he keeps me using that, I'm happy to do that. <laughs> that's that important push between the team and the product owner. Because yeah. if you're the husband, you're the team. You're not the scrum master. <laughs> you're definitely not the Just product owner. Just be clear owner. about this. Yeah, you're the team. <laughs> so, uh, no, that was, especially because I still traveled and went to clients and, and okay. did trainings and speaking at different conferences during that time. So. I can't imagine. I, I'm one of those people that make list of lists, though. Yeah. So I, I know I have OCD issues, but um, that was the way that we organized so that we understood. So we had dates on there of what we needed to do. We didn't look at cycle time. I, I haven't. I haven't gone <laughs> that far. A lot of waste in your uh, <laughs> kitchen cleaning. There. We didn't go that far, but it definitely was a tool for us to organize and, and come together. Okay, cool. I, so I appreciate you saying that because I have people ask about like, how can I do this if I don't. Uh -huh. It probably work, and I was like, you can do this anywhere. Yes. You just have to find something. So. I have not been brave enough to hold an at-home retro yet. So I, there is a, there's a CSC <laughs> that does that with his wife on their marriage. I told my wife, she laughed at me. I'm like, yeah, thank you. I, I, I am person. fairly, I am not brave enough. Someone's like, you should do it with your kids. I'm like, no, I still get to yeah. say, I said so. Like, <laughs> exactly. like this is, uh, maybe, maybe in a couple of years we'll go down that path, yeah. but right now we have it. Cool. All right, I know you got a lot to do, but I really appreciate you coming Oh, by. thank you. This was fantastic. And good luck with the rest of the show. Thank you. All right, cool. And oh, don't, yeah. sorry. Oh, apologize the show for that. formal. Yeah, so. <laughs> I don't think we've First shaken hands ever. First time I've lost ever. it on camera today, <laughs> this week. Uh, so Thanks. we're going to be doing these all week long. Uh, please keep checking back because we're going to be doing interviews with everybody who's here that we can get into the schedule. Uh, and thanks for watching.